imagine how high that thing is going to be. Right. Uh, and you can be seen from a long ways. And if you were doing a salute, you're on a parade, you raise that thing up and you may not have clearance to raise it up because when you drop it down, right where your elbow is, it would be level to the ground. But imagine how high that thing's going to be then. Right. And that would be saluting during ceremonies. So the guide on bear would have this out here on the parade ground at Fort Wallace. He's responsible for it uh, to be, it is the symbol of the company commander, or Miles Kehoe, out here. And a bugler typically would bring you messages from another company or from the, the regiment, and they would look for that guide on. The person bringing the message is almost always the second trumpeter, either from the regiment or from the companies or no battalion formations. And he is, where, he is riding a white horse. So the white horse rider is looking for that guide on. And if you as a guide on bearer, you would shout to the company commander, message coming. And so you'd turn around and look for the white horse coming. And that would be a signal again and a message being brought. Now, that is the symbol for the company commander, or uh, there was other colors for the regimental commander. Again, there were no battalions representing that. So what this would indicate is the location also of the commander. If you're out on the prairie and you're riding, it would tell you who the commander is. By the way, if the commander falls, then there was an order of merit that would assume command. For a moment, it might be somebody within the company, but everybody knew who was the next senior officer in the regiment who would then rush to Kehoe's company, and then the guide on bearer would follow that lieutenant uh, or captain as the new commander at the end of the day. And so it was order of merit. So it wasn't I company, Kehoe fell, and uh, a lieutenant assigned to Kehoe. No, that's not how it worked. It would be the senior lieutenant that would assume command. If, obviously, if the guide on is with the guide on bearer and they're off of Fort Wallace and a visitor came, uh, maybe a senior officer came to Fort Wallace and come to the adjutant's office, and let's say this is the adjutant's office, which also was typically the guardhouse, and the guidon's missing, they would know instantly that the commander was not here. He was out on patrol somewhere else. If he was here and he was uh, in his office or he was on official duties at Fort Wallace, then let's take the guidon and it would be placed right outside the, the office of the adjutant. So go ahead and place the colors. And anyone coming to visit Fort Wallace and looking for Miles Kehoe, he's here. He's at work. And so when people come in here, you would expect somewhere in the immediate area, and the adjutant likely knows where he's at and send dispatch somebody that uh, somebody has come. Customers come a calling or have messages here for you. If uh, Kehoe is uh, not in his office or immediate area, but say, He's uh, gone out on some official duty. He's got a, let's say he's got a detachment that's uh, on the Santa Fe, I mean the Smoky Hill Trail, a little bit further west, and he's just visiting them and anticipated back. Then the colors, the guide on base and the guide on, would be visible inside the adjutant's office, which indicates that Kehoe is not immediately available. And if you look inside and the base is there, but not the guide on, he's with his guide on bearer, uh, out somewhere, maybe on a patrol. If it's inside or, or not visible anywhere in the adjutant's office, that means he is off duty. He might be uh, down at Pond Creek. He may have uh, been taking a stagecoach over to uh, uh, Fort Harker or someplace, but he's just not available. Or if he goes to his quarters for the evening and he is not available at all, he's gone writing letters to his girlfriend back in Auburn, New York, then what would happen is the base and the guide on would be in the corner and frequently the adjutant would take a cover that was what they call a rubberized blanket, but it was essentially canvas like a tent and would cover the colors. And since Kehoe is not here, the adjutant would put it out of, out of his way. 
until uh, until Kehoe appears the next day or the, or the guide on bear comes and brings the guide on. So even today, the guide on represents the commander and that he's in his office or he's within the company area, uh, be outside. If the guide on is uh, then uh, staffed and put away, he may be on leave, he may be on vacation in some neighboring town or something. If the colors are cased and put away, then the commander is not present, not available, period. And so it's just a tradition that is carried. And I'll just mention this guide on is an 1863 standard guide on, uh, as is the 1863 standard uh, mast, uh, the guide on pole, which is made of ash, uh, seven foot long, one and a half inch, uh, one and a quarter inches wide. Uh, but this is of that pattern uh, made by contract from a company in, uh, in Georgia that's still making, and the people in Vermont still making the mast. Uh, this was the standard guide on from 1863 to 1884. So this is exactly what you would see and expect to see uh, Miles Keogh and his, and his, ad, and his uh, guide on bear having. So it's proper. This is uh, the only post that Keogh commanded that his colors be here and we use the library as the adjutant's office. And that he is somewhere on the grounds uh, inspecting the troops or conducting some kind of business. So that's uh, the, the, the guide on. Still continues uh, with the traditions of today. It's the uh, physical, I guess, uh, sign where the commander is or is not.